So this story came out a couple of days ago with a decent amount of fanfare on the internet and the teeniest amount of fanfare on cable news and PBS news. In fact, I didn't hear about it at all on cable news and PBS news covered it for a split second, which is the only way I would have found out about it because it didn't come up on my aggregators for news. And what I've done here is I've got, let's see, one, two, three, four, I feel like I'm on Sesame Street, five, six, seven, really feel like I'm on Sesame Street, eight, eight tabs set aside for the YouTube of the gay gene. And then this one is just to scroll down to see what the headlines look like for it. And what I did is I read them all and I put them in order of, I'm going to say most accurate to least accurate. But if you prefer the terms least contradicted, most contradicted, that'll work too. Okay, so what's interesting, now we're starting with the best and then we're going to get to the worst. So let's begin this ride, shall we? Hello and welcome to the Tea Party Hardy channel, where the party is just getting started. Current events looked at through a skeptical eye using science, history, and sometimes humor to explore the events of the day. Let's get down to business. So the Los Angeles Times, which, much to my surprise, but cool for them, wins best article uh, covering the data. It's obviously the longest, too. All right, so their headline is, No single gay gene determines same-sex behavior DNA analysis finds. This headline is correct. Uh, and some get it right, some don't. No single gay gene determines the same sexual behaviors. It's not a single gene, it's actually five genes. So they are telling the truth. But if you were to just read the headline, you might get all screwed up, which is what these ones at the end are counting on, because, whoa. Let's see what the next one headlined. The next one headlined... No single gay gene associated with being gay. Now, that's BBC. I know BBC tilts left. Usually, they'll bring up stuff they don't like in their stories, which not so much in the American media. CBS. Oh, that was the one I started with when I started reading these. Whew. Uh, we're going to have some fun when we get to that one. This one says, is there a gay gene? Major news study says no. That's what I mean by American deceptiveness. Because there's not a gay gene there's five. But this is how American media likes to screw with you. Where is the Washington Post? What did they say? The Washington Post says, there's no one gay gene, but genetics are linked to same-sex behavior. New study says, so anybody who knows that the word genetics, which includes the word gene, which is no accident, would understand that, oh, well, if there's not one gay gene, but it's genetic, then there's clearly some genes involved, but they're playing on you they're really counting on you not putting that together because they're acting like CBS. No, the study says no. No, it doesn't say no. Don't you love that double negative? Let's take a look over here. Reuters, no gay gene, but study finds genetic links to sexual behavior. Why don't any of these headlines say, we have found the genes that correlate with it? Well, you'll see why. And there's a, <laughs> if you don't already know why, and in fact, if you're watching this video, thank you. And if you want anybody else to see this video, you're going to have to share it. Because the fact that you found it is a pure miracle. Because YouTube does not like people talking about this subject whatsoever. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Neither pro nor con. We're not going to do pro nor con. We're going to do science and media representation. There's no such thing as a gay gene, new study argues. Right, because there's five time. Ooh, we're in the bad ones now. And then the worst of all... Scientists debunk the idea there is a gay gene that determines the same-sex attraction. You think the headline's bad? Wait till you get into the story. Again, we're going to be going over the science, and we're going to be going over the media... Oh, let's just say it's spin. No single gay gene determines same-sex sexual behavior. DNA analysis finds. And wouldn't it be hilarious if these two guys were named Gene? They're not. In fact, they don't even give their names. But I'm like, no, oh, look, there's Gene and you, Dean. Oh, see, not a single gay gene. Get the joke. Oh, boy. Oh, we move on. 
Okay, Amina Khan, what do you have to teach us today? While genetic differences play a significant role in sexual behavior, there is no single gene responsible. Wow, do these articles go back and forth on the significant role? That, seriously, they go back and forth. It's insignificant, it's significant, it's, oh my God. Uh, it is absolutely, and that again, this is because of the group they're talking about and the massive amount of political power they wield. Just ask YouTube. And again, if this video is choppy, it's because I'm going to cut out all the blah, blah, blah and, and bring you straight into the, well, the meat. The findings which looked at behavior and not sexual identity, as if that matters. This, welcome to the year 2019, where identity and behavior are different. Hey, I'm a guitar player. Oh, is that your identity? Well, it's what I do. Oh, yeah, I remember back a while ago, I won't be putting in dates, and the, the argument was, you're not a bad person, you're just doing bad things. This is what that grows out of. This is, this is what behavior and identity being separate has, has grown out of, is, oh, you're not a bad person, you just do bad things. Really, then what makes a bad person if it's not the person doing the bad things? Well, we're not, we're not going to get into that. We're going to call that your identity in the future. The findings which looked at behavior and not sexual identity debunk the notion of a singular gauging. Good for you, LA Times. True. It's not a singular gauging. Even when all the tested genetic variants were taken into account, they collectively account for no more than a quarter of the same-sex behavior reported by the study participants. Now, this is another really good thing on the LA Times. They put it at the very top that it, it's one quarter of the sexual behavior reported by the study participants. All the other ones either put that way in the middle or they bury it. And then they sing-song it with the confusing statistics, which I will show you. They collectively accounted for no more than a quarter. That's one in four for you people that ain't good at math. Instead, the results published Thursday in the Journal of Science hint at the complex blend of factors that influence human sexuality, including society and the environment. Hint, that's interpretation. The findings themselves reinforce this idea that diversity of sexual behavior across humanity is really a natural part of our overall diversity as a species, said Benjamin Neal, a geneticist at the Board Institute of MIT and Harvard and one of the study's senior authors. That's really a meaningful and important result. This guy is so elitist and so arrogant, as you'll see in his quotes from some of the other articles. It's funny because in one of the articles, they don't even attribute him to creating the, the study. They just say he works at Harvard. They don't even give him MIT credit. Okay, that's why I say the, the LA Times is really coming in at home base because they provide you with the most detail. Oh, let's go back and look at the sentence because this is a good science sentence. The findings themselves reinforce this idea that diversity of sexual behavior across humanity is really a natural part of our overall diversity as a species. Okay, now using the word over and over diversity is just, uh, that's gobbledygook because of the, the word variant would be more accurate than diversity, but it doesn't have the same left-wing buzz appeal. But the words, they don't mean the same thing. D diversity means to divide, and variant means a collection of different things together. But the key word here, the good science word, is natural. Because obviously all of these things that happen in genetics are natural. Unless you've got uh, an interrupter like uh, radiation, then, you know, uh, from plutonium, all genetic factors are going to be natural. Where they get into trouble later on is they start including the word normal, and normal is a math word, not a science word. Okay, so now we drop in and we meet Miss Melinda Mills. Down here it says, I had seen some quite poor studies of small samples and false claims and things, so I was glad that finally this topic was examined in a very scientific way with a large sample, said Melinda Mills a social and molecular geneticist at the University of Oxford who was not involved in the work. But boy, does she know how to spout the leftist line because she is in every one of these articles I showed you. Even though, let me say it again, who was not involved in the work. But she spits out the, the line. The, you know, she's towing the line, so there she is. Come on board, Miss Melinda Mills. Tell us everything we want to hear. We'll put you in every article. The researchers found two significant spots in the genome that were linked to same-sex behavior across people of both sexes. And when they analyzed male and female genomes separately, they found three more, two specifically for men 
and one specifically for women, bringing the total number of significant genetic markers up to five. So when I keep saying and they keep saying that there are five markers, there are five genes, not one, that's where that math comes from. Now, here, now we're going to get into the yo-yoism, but I think this is the one. Oh yeah, God, there's such a reason the LA Times, you know, wins my best of award because the way they're about to cover this, because the other ones don't. Nonetheless, when taken all together, these five locations on the genome could account for much less than one percent of the same sexual behavior on a population level. The researchers said less than one percent, and the other ones are going to trumpet that hardcore. But watch what the LA Times puts next. And the other ones sometimes put it in there, but they make it really confusing. The, the LA Times doesn't. Kudos to them. Can't believe I'm raving about them. Using a different analytical technique, the scientists found that when taking into account all of the subtle influences of many, many markers across the genome that they did not specifically identify, genetics could potentially account for up to 8 to 25% of the population's same-sex behavior. That's one in four. Keep that in mind for when we get to the close of this video. That's because, in all likelihood, a huge and currently no unknown number of genetic markers probably play infinitesimally tiny roles in shaping behavior, Neil said. Right, but when you put them all together, you get the predictability of one in four on the high side. Another analysis in the paper which did not focus on DNA, but on familial relationships, and none of the other articles touched this one at all, uh, between uh, pairs of individuals suggested that a slightly larger share of the variation in same-sex behavior, 32.4%, could be attributed to genetics. So now we just went from one in four to almost one in three, holy moly, could be attributed to genetics. That number may take into account other complex genetic effects beyond S&Ps, though it might also be influenced by some assumptions baked into the framework, the scientist said. I wish I knew which scientist they were referring back to. It's really vague at that point. So anyways, we went from less than 1% to 1 in 4 to 1 in 3. And again, none of the other articles that I showed you at the beginning touch on this 1 in 3. Among the five significant S&Ps they found, the ones specific to men were linked to smell receptor genes, sensitivity to certain scents, and regulation of sex hormones such as testosterone. That finding makes a certain amount of sense, Neil said, but again, we don't have much more to say beyond that sort of high-level description, said the elitist Neil. That's not the quote that makes him so elitist. It's coming. The incomplete overlap between genetic markers linked to male and female same-sex behaviors is a sign that slightly different processes may be at work in men and women when it comes to sexual behavior. I don't like the word may. That's a squishy word. It doesn't belong in science. It may also speak to differing influences of gendered social norms, said Mills, who wrote a commentary on the results. Yes, and it was picked up by every one of these articles because she toes the line. She, look at that. How does she toe the line? Because she throws in gendered social norms. Now you're getting into hoogoo booga -ism. What? I'm not getting into that. We're staying on the science. We can do hoogoo booga -ism on a different day. It certainly means that human sexuality is nowhere near as simplistic as some would like to believe, she added. Straw man argument! When was the last person you met that was saying, oh, you know, human sexuality is completely simple. Straw man. You've been talking to straw man. There's an inclination to reduce sexuality to genetic determinism, she wrote. Who cares what she has to think? This isn't her paper. In some cases, this view is intended to reduce the stigma associated with same-sex behavior. This is towing the line. In others, it's to classify it as pathological. This is towing the line. But the findings show that while a host of genetic markers may help explain the underlying diversity of human sexual behavior, these markers are far too complex for my poor little brain to either predict or prevent it. Her poor widow brain can't handle anymore. It's somewhat akin to traits like height, 
which have a certain genetic component, but can also be influenced by a complex array of other factors, such as nutrition and environment. You could include baldness, you could include breast cancer, you could include um, pancreatic, you can include any cancer you want in this, because those all have genetic markers, and they're all influenced by what you do in your life. Now, while I want you to remember the word normal and the word natural, I would also like you to make a special bookmark in your brain for the concept of uh, the environmental factors and the way they skirt around them. Yes, I did say skirt around when I'm talking. Yeah, I did. Exactly which environmental and cultural factors play a role is unclear. And they're probably going to remain unclear as long as the, uh, what, did they, what did they get called? The alphabet crew um, is dictating how these articles are written and how they are revealed. What do you mean dictating? Did you say dictating? Oh, first you're skirting, now you're dictating. Wow, it's just wrong. It's just so wrong. Um, what well, Mills is in this article to prove their power. Exactly which environmental and cultural factors play a role is unclear. Because those are varied and complex and are much harder to pin down and study than specific genetic markers the study's authors said. Mm -hmm. Uh, here's a fun statistic that they, some of them get into. In this respect, the researchers found genetics had a stronger influence on same-sex behavior in men than in women. And then down here we meet Andrea Ghana. From a genetic standpoint, there is no single continuum from opposite sex to same sexual behaviors, said lead author Andrea Ghana. If she is the lead author, why do we not meet her until way down here? A human geneticist at the Institute of Molecular Medicine in Finland. Ah, now we must get into, did you bow, Mr. Neil? Did you kneel before the alphabet crew to get approval for your study? This confirmation of the wide diversity of sexual behaviors echoes. That's right, doesn't contradict. It echoes what the researchers said they had heard in discussions of the results with the representatives of the BLTGQ community. Echoes doesn't contradict. You must kneel before the alphabet crew. The BLTGQ plus community, in case you wanted a ham on the side, or french fries on the side, has been arguing for a long time that there's a range of sexualities. It's not binary, zero and one. Mills, oh, there's Mills towing the line for us again. I think that's what those additional analyses show. Oh, do you? Oh, do you, Mills? And that's why you keep getting quoted, because you are towing the line for the alphabet crew. The scientists were quick to point out that the findings were population-based and could not be applied on an individual level. Yet. They also warned that the work should not, in any case, be used to try to convert people who engage in same-sex behaviors. And that to consider doing so would be a gross misrepresentation of the study's finding. Simply put, that is not an appropriate reflection or representation of the work that we've done, Neil said. Yeah, I wonder what uh, Andrea Ghanoff says. Now, remember I told you to do that bookmarker where I said that there are, according to them, a host of environmental factors that are, that are playing a role. But we can't figure out what they are. Neil said. Well, Neil, who kneels before the BLTGQ alphabet crew, when he says, they also warn that the work should not be in any case be used to convert. Because think about it, folks. If you figure out those environmental factors, that means as a parent, you can alter those environmental factors to make sure your kid grows up straight and therefore gives you a fairly decent chance of getting you some grandkids. Mm-hmm. That's why... He said earlier that they wouldn't be able to figure him out because Neil kneels before the alphabet crew. Officials with GLAAD and the alphabet crew advocacy organization praised the work. Of course they did. It was echoed. Neil went and kneeled. He got the echo permission. The new study provides even more evidence. That, that, that's what it says. Evidence that, that, being gay or lesbian, is a natural part of human life. Yes, it happens in nature, like all the other genetic markers, good and bad. A conclusion that has been drawn by researchers and scientists time and again. 
Because you've forced them to since the 1970s? Just a possibility. Glad. Chief Programs Officer. Chief. Wow. There's racial appropriation. Programs Officer. Zleek Stokes. Said in a statement. The work also reconfirms the long-established understanding that there is no conclusive degree to which nature or nurture influence how a gay or lesbian person behaves. I wonder how long long-established is, Zeke? I do wonder. Now, here's the other contradiction that's fun to watch. We have heard for, let's see if I can, if I can quote him, we have heard for a long established amount of time that there was an understanding that gays are born that way. And now, Zeke Stokes is saying, oh no, 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 we're not born that way. The work also reconfirms the long established understanding that there is no conclusive degree to which nature or nurture influence how a gay or lesbian person behaves. Hmm. So you were born with it, and now you're not born with it. I wonder why. That would be the other bookmarker I have you holding. Nancy Cox. Wow, I do not create these names. A human geneticist at Vanderbilt University who was not involved in the study, but we're still going to bring her on board for the LA Times because she's going to toe the line, baby. Praise the scientist for considering so many of the complexities inherent of the subject of sexual behavior. I hope we continue to think of this more the way we do many other kinds of behaviors that don't have the drama and charge that these behaviors have often had. Cox said... And that's why she's in the article when she had nothing to do with it because she's towing the line for the alphabet crew. Okay, let's go to the next story. In the next story, let's see how the BBC handles this. Now we do a comparison contrast. No single gay gene associated with being gay. Hmm. The study published in Science used data from the UK Biobank 23andMe and found some genetic variants associated with same-sex relationships. But genetic factors account for, at most, 25% of the same-sex behavior. That's one in four for people that aren't good at math. Advocacy... Whoa, look at this. One, two, three. It only took them three paragraphs, and that's including that one sentence that starts with the word but, which actually belongs to the sentence above it, as the third paragraph. And now they kneel before the alphabet crew. They're already doing it. Advocacy, this is, and to think, this is the second best article. Advocacy group, GLAD, said the study confirmed no conclusive degree to which nature or nurture influenced how gay or lesbian behaves. But you said you were born that way. Well, we don't say that now. It's inconvenient now. So we switched it. We'll switch it back if we need to. Have no fear. We do that all the time. The researcher, oh, okay, so, anyways, wanted to show you on this one. They went all the way down to, how many sentences is that? One sentence? In real life, that's really all one sentence. Uh, the third sentence. They hide it in the third paragraph, wink, wink, it's the third sentence, before they were kneeling before them. Oh, look at this, look at this in big words. Impossible to predict. I'm saving that for the end of why that's in there. We've already gone over the fact that they're they're switching back and forth between I was born that way, I'm not born that way, and and now the quarter oh oh but together they account for only under one percent of the same sex behavior, yeah mm -hmm. remember the other one that said all the way up to thirty three percent, impossible to predict. But Ben Neal, an associate professor in analytic and transitional genetics unit at Massachusetts General Hospital, yes yeah, see they don't give him credit for working at MIT. And a study, genetics is less than half of the story. Dude, that's 49% if it's less than half of sexual behavior. But it's still a very important contributor. Yeah, I would think anything that's less than half would 49%. And he's not giving me the number, so I'm allowed to just fill it in. There is no single gay... Oh my god, we know. There's five. There's five. It's effectively impossible to predict an individual sex behavior for genome. Now, see, what I find interesting about this, from a scientist's point of view, watch this. It's effectively impossible to predict an individual's sexual behavior from their genome. Most scientists finish those sentences with the word yet because they're doing the studies. This guy did the study and he did not include the word yet because Neil kneels before the alphabet crew because the alphabet crew does not want the gay genes to ever be known. Why? I'm going to tell you at the end. 
Now, fa satharig nitispuntesuti, forgive me, senior scientist and 23 of me added, this is a natural and normal part of the variation in our species, and this should also support precisely the position that we shouldn't try and develop gay curism. That's not in anyone's interest. That's a talking point right there, because you're going to see it in the next article by Neil. Neil's going to say the exact same line. That's not in anyone's interest. Um, when anybody tells you that's not in anyone's interest, they're pretty much taking the lead saying, we know better than you. That's not in anyone's interest. Uh, who came to that conclusion? I'm just saying that's not a scientific thing to say. That is an autocrat or dictator's point of view. That is an elitist point of view. That is not a scientific point of view to say that's not in anyone's interest. You don't get to determine that. Sorry. Now, science words. This is a natural and normal part of the variation of our species. Natural. Anything in genetics is natural as long as it doesn't have an interrupter. Normal. Uh-uh. Normal is a math word. Normal means over 50%. As the last article that I have featured in here says, it's up to the most you're going to get is 10% of the population is gay. So 10 max is 40% under 50. So it is not normal. Normal is a math word. Natural is a science word. You can't have it both, baby. It ain't normal. It may be natural, but it ain't normal. And the idea, this elitist attitude, oh, that it's not in anyone's interest. You don't get to choose that. Oh, let's see. Also support Priceless the position that we shouldn't try and develop gay curism. You don't get to choose that. Do you know how many gay people commit suicide every year? Maybe if they could find a different way. Maybe those behaviors that Neil is hiding, if they would have been adjusted so that they wouldn't have had to go through any of that stress. And they would have just come out, oh, I don't know, say, normal. Oh, I'm using a math word. Then uh, they should have that option. Sorry. Saying that that's not anyone's best interest with the suicide rate that it is? I don't think so. Think you might be wrong. And then here they're just being silly. The study clearly shows that there's no such thing as caging. Yeah, it says there's five. There's no genetic variant in the population which has any substantial effect on sexual orientation. Oh, I don't know. I'd say one out of four, one out of three. That's pretty freaking substantial. And we'll save that for the end. Even if homosexuality is not genetically determined, as this study shows, it did show that it was genetically determined. Thanks for reading it wrong. That does not mean that it is not in some way innate and indispensable as part of an individuality. Zeke stoked from the LBT media. This new research... Oh, there's, there they are trumpeting him again. But see, this is straight up backwards. Even if homosexuality is not genetically determined, but it is. One in four people. Okay, let's go to the next one. Is there a gay gene major study says no, CBS? No, it didn't. Thanks for your false reporting, fake news. There's no such thing as a single gay gene, now they get it right, that drives a person's sexual behavior. This is a natural and normal part of the variation. Ben Hill. See, now they call Ben is saying normal here where he didn't say it in the other article. So now I don't know who's telling the truth here. But once again, natural science word, normal math word. You lose. It ain't normal. Director of Genetics with the Stanley Center for Psychiatric Research at the Broad Institute of MIT and Harvard. He has different credentials in each one. I wonder if he's, like, totally just making it up. That should also support the position that we shouldn't try to develop gay cures. That is not in anyone's interest. Boom! Boom! Drop the mic. Just an expression. I'm not going to drop this mic. It's the only one I got. Um, talking point. That's a talking point. And it's an elitist talking point, but I think I've covered that. Okay, now here we get down to the other one. It's effectively impossible to predict an individual's sexual behavior from their genome, Neil said. Genetics is less than half of this story for sexual behavior, but it's still a very important contributing factor. These findings reinforce the importance of diversity as a key aspect of sexual behavior. Again, whenever he says diversity, just turn it off because it means nothing. It really means nothing. However, this is the same guy that says, we're never going to tell you what those contributing factors are because he doesn't want gay cures. It's not in anyone's interest, I say so. <laughs> I'm reading the talking points. 
glad. Ooh, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It took seven paragraphs before CBS bowed to the advocacy groups of the Alphabet crew. And then I've already read it to you a million times. Um, yeah, so it took them seven paragraphs to, to kneel and bow. Oops, sorry. Neil, you're already kneeling. The bad one. Newsweek. What does Newsweek say? Scientists debunk the idea there is gay gene that determines same-sex attraction. Fake news! A person's genes do not determine whether they will be attracted to members of the opposite sex, scientists believe. Well, not the ones that did the study! The research debunks the idea that there is a so-called gay gene says the authors of the study published in the journal Science. They say the findings highlight the complexity of the human traits, such as sexuality. Yeah, it only debunks the idea of a single gene. And it absolutely does not say the genetics don't play a part. Oh, here's the one. Now, see, here's the one where they're going to cough up this little fact that GLAD doesn't want you to know. Between 2 to 10 percent of the world's population at any given time report having same-sex partners, according to research cited by the authors. But scientists aren't sure what determines whether a person will identify as gay, straight, or bisexual, or somewhere else on the spectrum of sexuality. Again, that really doesn't matter what they identify as. It matters what they do. They're not a bad person. They just do bad things 24 hours a day. They even dream bad things. In an article accompanying the research in science, Melinda Mills, professor of sociology, yeah, sociology, mm-hmm, University of Oxford, who did not work on the paper. Y'all know what sociology is, right? That, that's not an MD, people. That's, that's like, it's a PhD. Did not work on the paper, wrote, although they did not find particular genetic loci associated with the same-sex behavior, when they combined the effects the low guy together into one comprehensive score. The effects are so small, under 1%, depending on which chart you use, that this genetic score could not be reliably used to predict same sexual behavior of an individual. Finally, the big reveal. We are at the end. Why does it matter? Why does it matter if there's a genetic marker? Planned parenthood. That's why. We're born that way. Wait a minute. There's a gay gene and they'll be able to tell before we're born? Oh, we weren't born that way. No, 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 we weren't born that way. No, no. Planned parenthood. It's a choice between a woman and her doctor. Whether or not she, not the father, those guys, they seem to have no relevance whatsoever. Whether or not she wants to give birth to a child that's going to be gay. One in four chance, lady. One in four chance your kid's going to have Down syndrome. One in four chance your kid's going to have heart disease. One in four chance your kid's going to come out with a missing leg. One in four chance your kid's going to come out to be gay. Whoa, 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 excuse me. Wait, what, what, what was that last one? One in four chance your kid could be gay. Oh, oh, yeah, that's why glad doesn't want there to be a gay gene or gay genes for that matter they're terrified of planned parenthood and what it will do to their maximum of one, uh, two to ten percent of the population at any one time as if that isn't small enough you know when iceland celebrated a couple of years ago we have no more down syndromes children because you killed them all in the womb because you killed them all in the womb. Do you remember when that leader of Iran came to America and said at the UN, we have no homosexuals in Iran? You start putting out the game genes marker? One in four chance? Guess what? You will have no gays in Iran. And that's why they're terrified. We hope you enjoyed the content. And if you did, feel free to like, subscribe. Come on back anytime. You're always welcome here as part of the family. And we'll see you in the future.